All right, let's take a look at Unit 6, Lesson 18, Modeling Circular Motion, because that's really what's happening here um, with, with all these sine and, and cosine functions. All right, so in 18.1, we're comparing bikes. Ah, so each graph shows the vertical position V in inches of a point on the outside of a bike wheel S seconds after the wheel begins to spin. So looking at these two graphs, which bike has larger wheels? Well, remember, the radius uh, gives you the amplitude. So the larger the radius, the larger the amplitude. So A is going to have uh, bigger wheels because it has a larger amplitude. And then which one is spinning faster? Well, which one has more revolutions in the same period of time? So graph B has one, two, three, and then some, right? Um, three plus. And then if you look at graph A, graph A has one, two, and then some. So graph B is going faster because there are more revolutions in one uh, period. So B, um, and it has more cycles, more revolutions. Oh, that is not how you spell cycles. Cycles, there we go. All right, let's take a look at 18 point two around a carousel. So Jade, Noah, and Elena are riding a carousel. Here is a view from above the carousel. Carousel. Um, the carousel moves in a counterclockwise direction. When the ride begins, Jada is at position J, Noah is at position N, and Elena is at position E. The measure of angle J-O-N is pi over two. So we know that this is a right angle. And the measure of the angle NOE is two pi over three. So this is two pi over three. Okay, um, so the radius of the carousel is 20 feet. How far does Jada travel to reach Noah's starting position? So it's moving counterclockwise. And so Jada is traveling along this arc, and we want to figure out, well, how far does she have to go? Well, we know the angle is pi over 2. And um, if she wants to, well, we know that the, the, the radius is 20 feet. That's ugly. All right, and so um, in order to get that arc length, remember that the arc length, which, which is S, is the same thing as R theta. And so that arc length is just 20 times pi over two, which is 10 pi. So she is going to be moving 10 pi feet. What about Elena's starting position? Well, then she needs to go another 2 pi over 3, so that would be 20 times 2 pi over 3, which is 40 pi over 3. Um, and so the total would end up being, um, let's see, that'd be 30 pi over 3 plus 40 pi over 3, which is 70 pi over three. So if she wanted to go, if Jada wanted to get to Elena's position, it would be 70 pi over three, or that's approximately 73.3 feet if you plug that into a calculator. All right. The carousel makes one complete rotation every 10 seconds. So at which times will Jada be at her starting position? Well, if it's every 10 seconds, 
um, then she would be back in her own position after 10 seconds, after 20 seconds, after 30 seconds, and so on. So Jada would be at her own after 10, 20, 30, and so on. Um, so that's when she'll be at her own starting position. Uh, to be at Noah's starting position, um, it would take her a quarter of that time because a full rotation is 10 seconds and Noah is a quarter of the, the length away. So it would be one fourth of 10, um, which is two and a half seconds. And then every 10 seconds after that. So 12 and a half seconds, uh, 22 and a half seconds, 32 and a half seconds, and so on. All right. And then number three, the carousel ride lasts for three minutes, three and a quarter minutes. Where will Elena be when the ride ends? So if, if it's a full rotation every 10 seconds, then so one rotation every 10 seconds. So every minute there are six rotations. So after three minutes, she will have gone 18 rotations. Right? And then a quarter of a minute is 15 seconds. All right, so that is one and a half rotations because one rotation was 10 seconds, so a half a rotation would be five. And so she would go 19 and one half rotations. So if she goes a half a rotation, she will end up um, directly across from where she was. She'll end up over here because that's a half a rotation. Um, so she'll end up halfway across from where she started. Oh, that's Elena. So it doesn't matter who it is, but Elena, so that, that actually would be over here. We're not talking about Jada now, we're talking about Elena. So she would be halfway across where she started. Um, and then how far will she have traveled? Well, our, um, our, there are a couple ways you could find this. I mean, you could find the circumference, um, which we know that the, let's see, what was the diameter? The radius was 20. So the, so the circumference is 2 pi r. So the circumference is 2 pi r. And so that is um, 40 times pi. Um, and so 40 times pi times 19 and 1 half uh, gives us, if you plug that into a calculator, about 2,450 feet. All right, let's take a look at 18.3, modeling the carousel motion. Jada begins the carousel ride at point J, and Noah begins the ride at point N. The radius of the carousel is 20 feet, and it rotates in a counterclockwise rotation, or direction, making one complete rotation every 10 seconds. Write an equation describing the horizontal coordinate of Jada's location as a function of time relative to the center of the carousel. So make sure to indicate the units of your variables. So if a full rotation is every 10 seconds, then I'm going to make my x 
units five. All right, and then we know that our radius is 20. And so let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We'll make these five as well. All right, and so um, we know that our starting point uh, is 20 feet above the bottom and we're going to end 20 feet above. So she is 20 feet away from uh, that the center there relative to the center of the carousel. Okay, so um, when she gets to halfway around a rotation, that will be five seconds, she'll be at negative 20, right? And when she is at two and a half seconds, she is at zero because she is, um, she is in line with that center of the carousel. And then the same thing would be true here. So there is one full rotation there. Um, oh, I'm sketching the graph without even writing the equation. So let's take a look at the equation. So we'll say J of T equals, um, and we're talking about the horizontal distance, so that's cosine. Remember that the radius was 20, so our amplitude is 20. And our rotation is every 10 seconds. So one full rotation, so 2 pi over 10, and then times t, right? Because uh, a rotation is every 10 seconds. So we're going to keep going with that pattern. And my minimum will be at 15. Maximum at 20, minimum at 25, maximum at 30, and then all of the in-betweens are going to be um, where it crosses the x-axis. And so our graph looks like that. All right, and then Jada starts, no. What does the graph tell you about Jada's location during the carousel? Well, she starts at the furthest position to the right. And then moves left before coming back. All right, um, let's take a look at number two. Write an equation describing the vertical coordinate of Noah's location as a function of time relative to the center of the carousel. All right, so we are looking at, oh, we did not put that equation here. Let's go back and make sure we indicate the units of our variables. So T is a uh, number of seconds. Since it started moving. And then J of T is Jada's horizontal position in feet. All 
uh, relative to the center. Okay. I right, remember that Noah was up here at the top. Um, and so uh, we're going to write an equation describing the vertical coordinate of Noah's location um, as a function of time relative to the center of the carousel. Make sure to indicate the units of your variables. All right, so Noah, n of t is equal to, and our amplitude hasn't changed, it's 20. Um, since his is the vertical coordinate, we're looking at the sine. Well, his, the um, period is the same, right? So we have 2 pi over 10 times t, but since his is sine, he has a horizontal translation here. Um, and so it might help if we take a look at uh, the graph to figure out that, um, that equation. So again, um, we're going to make this 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then same thing here, units of 5. All right, um, and so where does he start um, when you're looking at uh, the vertical position? Well, he's starting the farthest away that he can. So he's starting up here um, at the 20, just like she was with her horizontal position. Um, so if he's starting the farthest away, that looks like a cosine. And so we need to add pi over 2 in order to translate that because if I, because we're shifting to the left, if it was sine, we would go up like this and then come back down. But we want to shift um, pi over 2 units to the left so that way it will look like cosine. And so then his graph is going to look very similar to hers. Um, where he comes down here, back up, back down, back up, back down, and back up. So it's going to look very similar to Jada's graph. And then his location is also very similar. He starts in the farthest position upward and moves downward and then continues going back and forth. All right, and then you can, um, well, let's take a look at the R you writing for more just real quick. So Diego rides a different carousel, begins at point position D, an equation describing the horizontal coordinate D of T of his location in feet relative to the center of the carousel as a function of time is D of T equals 15 times cosine of pi T over 15 minus pi, where T is the number of seconds since the carousel started to move. So, what is the radius of the carousel? That 15 feet. Um, how long does it take the carousel to make a complete rotation? So we have 2 pi, I don't know why I wrote 20, 2 pi divided by that coefficient here, which is pi over 15. So when you do 2 pi divided by that fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So your pi's cancel, and you're left with 30 seconds. <clears throat> and then where did Diego start? Um, since we are subtracting pi, 
he started at the far left on the opposite side of zero. Because you are subtracting pi, so that is a um, horizontal shift to the right. All right, so you can take a look at the summary if you want um, to read a little bit more.